In this video, we're going to be talking about map difficulties and if certain maps could be in a different category depending on your own personal experience, but also just the map in general. When I talk about RBS, I mean red balloon seconds. So on a normal difficulty on round one, how long does it take for a red balloon to get from the start to the end of a track when it's not on fast forward? Monkey Mater should stay in the beginner category because of its long RBS of 32.75 and its relatively easy layout of a map in order to put towers down. It's got a lot of space to put monkey farms down and be able to build a relatively large monkeyopolis if you can make it happen. In the Loop can stay as a beginner map. It has an RBS of 44.39, so longer than Monkey Meadows. And if you can place some towers in the middle here, it means it's able to cover pretty much all of the track when it comes to early game, mid game, late game, when it comes to the progression of a balloon and on the track. And there's also just plenty of options as well when it comes to like what towers you can place down. Middle of the road, you could see it as an intermediate map just by its layout alone, like with these six buildings and other obstacles on the track, along with its relatively limited amount of farming space. You could really call this an intermediate map, but because of the sheer length of 45.20 RBS, I think this should stay in beginner, but I would see why people would put this in the intermediate category. Tree Stump should stay in the beginner category with its relatively long 44.27 RBS along with a lot of space where you can place down towers in order to exterminate the balloons. Also this iconic spot makes it very nice for global towers like the sniper for example to be able to overcome obstacles like these logs for example. Town Center I think should stay as a beginner difficulty map, although it is a relatively shorter beginner map because of the layout of this map you can put towers in the middle and it's able to cover the beginning of the map and the later portions of the map. So definitely a beginner map, but the track lane does make it seem a little bit more difficult than other beginner maps. 1, 2, 3 with a relatively long 43 RBS exactly. I would keep it as a beginner, but I would say in the early stages of a game, it could be seen as intermediate because not every single space that can be accessible is open for you to be able to place down a tower. So a lot of these trees from round one onwards won't be available for you to be able to place down a, t down a tower. So therefore you can't put your tag shoes to where there's currently a blue tree in the way. Scrapyard with a massive 60.73 RBS should stay in the beginner category simply because of its map length. But the layout of the map can kind of make it difficult if you don't have something like a sniper in order to be able to cover every acre of the map with a means to be able to attack balloons. Because short range attacks like tag zones can kind of struggle if you don't place it correctly. Also, you've got the Crusher here, which is a nice feature, which also makes a Gerardo One Tower Chimps doable before they nerfed it and you can't afford him anymore in round six. The Cabin is the first map I'm going to say that can go in the intermediate category, with its relatively shorter 34.47 RBS, along with a relatively difficult map layout in order to fully utilize. You are honestly really restricted to what kind of towers you can put down because of all the obstacles like the trees and there are certain spaces which you think you could put down a tower but you can't because of obstacles and because of these obstacles you won't be able to actually like place down a tower and it's able to be able to do what it needs to because that obstacle is in the way it's just not an overall beginner friendly map i would say i would say stick to a more beginner friendly map if you're learning the ropes of a game but this i honestly can see as being an intermediate map honestly i would honestly yes move this up to intermediate resort 100 percent should stay in the beginner category you could build one of the biggest monkeyopolises on this map aside balloons but obviously balloons you can build a huge one over there but it's got such a beginner friendly layout you can use this lawn straight here to make it very friendly for your darkling gunner especially for your ray of doom just point it down there and it's able to exterminate 
a lot of threats. Also, this little square here is perfectly ideal for your attack shooters and ice monkeys. Also, Sorda as well, don't forget Sorda. This little space here made Sorda capable of doing a one tower chimp before Ninja Kiwi nerfed her. I forgot to mention Resort has an RBS of 54.33. Skate should stay as a beginner map. It is relatively friendly to be able to fully utilize. Like you can place towers along this spot here, along with this spot and down here, along with this ring over here to be able to make a lot of path or well, cross paths that very utilized with your towers. It is a very beginner friendly map. And these trees don't really cover your abilities to be able to put stuff down. I'll say the only downside of this map is that you can't really build a big monkeyopolis unless you are able to fully utilize this water with either platforms or the ice tower. I forgot again, Skates has an RBS of 42.98. The RBS of Lotus Island being 37.20 makes it a beginner map really, but honestly the layout of this map along with all of these plants in a way, and the stone podium not being in the most ideal spot in order to... Well then again, you, it, I don't even know what I was talking about there because it literally covers all of the track there but it would have been more useful over here in order to be closer to the beginning and end of a track but the middle path is also good but this honestly can be seen as an intermediate map but definitely not as concrete of an intermediate map like change from beginner to intermediate as the cabin was because this is definitely more beginner friendly than the cabin but it's honestly a map layout that you can kind of see being changed because it's not really friendly for a lot of different towers in order to fully utilize. Candy Falls with an RBS of 47.92 should absolutely stay in the beginner category. Its map layout is very friendly. You can place a tower down. It's able to cover the beginning portion, the middle portion, and the late portion of the map with these three horizontal rows in which you can really utilize a single tower's placement down and it's able to attack multiple parts of a track. Also, I just love this map in general aesthetically. Winter Park with an RBS of 41.05 and the map layout itself does make it definitely a beginner friendly map. So keep it set in the beginner difficulty category. Carved with an RBS of 44.67 along with a very friendly layout, particularly around the mouth area here. And the bomb here, which you can utilize multiple parts of a track, definitely makes it a very beginner friendly map. Park Path with an RBS of 40.22, yeah, definitely a beginner map. Like, put, keep it in beginner because of the fact that you can make multiple parts of this track work. So, Place them along these bridges, you got a beginner part covered, middle part covered, late part covered. Being able to cover many different parts of a track is very ideal in order to make that tower fully work, rather than just saying, put a tower over here and it's able to pop everything just along this little straight here. No, that's not going to be hugely ideal. Alpine Run with an RBS of phase 6.55. I would honestly lean this towards one of the more difficult beginner maps, but definitely keep it in the beginner category because you can definitely put a tower down here and it's able to cover the beginning portion, middle portion, and late portion. But there's only a few spots where you're able to cover all three of these different parts of a track. Frozen Over with an RBS of 40.37, 37, sorry. This is definitely a beginner friendly map. Keep it in the beginner category with a very friendly layout to be able to fully utilize. You can even make tax shooters utilize this map very well because of its a lot of places where you can put it down and it's able to cover beginning and middle and sub late portions depending on where you put them down. Cubism, one of the most friendly and easiest maps in the entire game and there are zero obstructions as well which is what only a few other maps can share. Like this is definitely easier than logs in some ways because there are no obstacles on the map that will obscure your line of sight the sniper is a very good example of that so yeah with an extremely easy and beginner friendly layout on this map 
definitely keep this map in the beginner category. Also forgot, Cubism has an RBS of 49.22. Now, four circles. Definitely keep this in the beginner category with its 41.42 RBS. And it's another map where you can utilize the tag shooter very well. I don't know why I keep using this as the base of some of my um, points here, but it honestly is a map where you can place an attack shooter and it can go ham in the beginning, the, uh, the later parts of the beginning, the mid section, and sort of the late section. Yeah, late as well. Hedge has an RBS of 43.78, which definitely fits the bill of a beginner map. But honestly, with these hedges in a way, it can make it difficult in order to fully utilize a space with towers if they're not, like, let's say, a flying tower like the Ace or the Heli, which can ignore line of sight and be able to not see these hedges as an obstruction, but just as a benefit, really, especially if they've got explosives on hand. But honestly, I can see this being an intermediate map. You can't really place down a tower and just let it go to ham. Like, there are gaps in the hedges here where it can able to see through and be able to pop balloons, but it honestly is a map that it can be hit or miss, but I think because of the RBS alone, it should stay in the beginner category, but I can see why it can go into the intermediate category. End of the road with an RBS of 30.05. believe it's the shortest of any map in the beginner category, and... It can be an intermediate map, I can say that out loud. Like, it is a relatively short map, and the layout of it will mean that you can put yourself with a huge monkeyopolis. One of the most beginner-friendly maps when it comes to placing down farms, you'll be able to generate a lot of money, but it's just honestly the RBS that really hinders this map's ability in order to be something which can keep it in the beginner cast guy. I would honestly would put this in intermediate because of its quite short track length but you can make certain towers work especially if they have a huge explosion where are you uh yeah explosion logs with the second or the first longest rbs of 60.33 i can't tell if it's logs or scrapyard which has the longest amount of track length but this definitely in the beginner category I would say, actually, with the Monkeyopolis, there's not a huge amount of space in which you can fully utilize a farm on. Like, it's not like you can just plunk one down and then be able to cover the entire length, or sorry, range of the, um, the Monkey Village, once to say 104 at the very least, and be able to build it up. But I would say, aside from the little difficulty of a Monkeyopolis, this track layout makes it perfect in order to be able to cover every single kind of little section like beginning, beginning towards the middle, middle, middle towards the late, late, and then at the exit here. Like you can place in a tower and it's able to attack a single balloon like five or six different times. Water Park with its double tracks, like it will spawn along here and then it will spawn along here in a different round. Is it? I've never played water parks enough to be able to remember if it's just Moabs on the second path here or is it just Moabs along this first path here. But I would definitely think that this can edge towards being an advanced map even though it does have a relatively, well, not short, but not long RBS. Yeah, the wiki doesn't have a confirmed amount of RBS that this track has, honestly. And there's only a limited amount of space in which you can place down a tower not every single spot is utilizable and it's a incredibly unfriendly map for monkey farms there's only a few spaces where it can deploy down a farm on the track and not all of the spots you want to have a farm down because you need other towers down so i could definitely see this as being an advanced map because of its map layout i I, I don't play this map a lot honestly i can't give you my full honest opinion on this because i just i just have not played this map a lot i'm mainly used to beginner maps and some intermediate maps and cornfield as well polymorpheus with a relatively short short track lane sorry of 21.94 uh, I can honestly see this as just as an intermediate map 
like this eye for example grants you many different benefits like 17.6 attack speed camo detection discount buffs but the only downside is the fact that you have to keep on opening it every um isn't like every round that ends with six that you have to open it again and each time you open it again it costs more money in order to open up or oh, actually is it just because of the uh, the round number itself no it depends on the round number itself so if it's between 6 and 15 it costs nothing and 16 to 25 it costs 500 and it goes up in every thousand possibly i'm not really looked at this map myself a huge amount to be able to fully determine the cost of this but I can see this either being intermediate more or advanced because you're only able to be able to target a balloon one time unless you have something extremely long length like a crossbow master or just play down a sniper but even then this map has obstacles so you can't really just plonk a tower down and uh, hopefully be able to uh, just go through the entire rounds effortlessly. Covered Garden I definitely see as an advanced map unique mechanic of this map where you can only deploy a tower down in one of these four sections at a time then again you can just use certain military towers like mortars aces uh helis along these other parts of a track here where you can fit them in and be able to fully click on them at any given point in time but honestly because of this unique factor about the uh the window of opportunity where you can place down a tower in one of these four squares only being one of them at a time intermediate in a way yes it's map layout makes it quite friendly for like say a sniper over here on this bench to be able to fully cover well almost fully cover the entirety of the track but just because of the fact that it's very difficult to place down a tower in a spot where you want it to be it, 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 I can see it being an advanced map. I also forgot that Covered Garden has an RBS of 19.77, so it's a relatively short track. Now, Quarry. I, I'm going to flip a coin with this one when it comes to its difficulty. Number one, it's beginner, because you can just place a infinite range tower like the sniper up here, and it's able to cover every single fragment of the map, and there's no um, obstacles to stop it. But on the other hand, if you have a tower down here, then I can see it being intermediate. So I think it's tier dependent on its difficulty. But honestly, I see this as more of a beginner map than a advanced map, definitely. It's one of the more easier intermediate maps, sorry. And the unique mechanic that the balloons and the Moabs have a different starting point honestly makes it very good as well like this truck moves on round 39 so yeah that's my honest opinion i think this track could be in the beginner map but i think it should stay as an intermediate map because of the different tiers although there are some towers that can raise its elevation to be able to target something that is a tier above it Almost forgot before I left, the Moab path here has an RBS of 37.40 and the Balloon path has an RBS of 41.63. So it's definitely the map layout or the map uh, formation that makes it an intermediate, but it's definitely longer than most, well not most, but there are a few beginner maps which have a shorter RBS than this map. Quiet Street with a Balloon Path RBS of 28.89 and the Moab Path being slightly longer being 30.24. Yeah, this is definitely an intermediate map. I, I can't really see any reason to bump it up to advance or keep or raise it down to beginner. Like it, it definitely has the RBS of being an intermediate map and these cars being removable does make for more space. It's definitely one of the less friendly maps when it comes to deploying down a Monkeyopolis. I, I forgot I haven't talked about Monkeyopolis as another map, but it's just like, like why would you put it down? Because it's not really a map that you would want to go ultra late game anyways. But this map definitely is an intermediate map. Like I can't really see any difficulties with that. Also, you can put down like Bluntonian reactors and ignores cover, so these frozen lakes can be removed and you're able to um, circumvent this hedge here. 
Lunaria is prime with a primary track length of 9.64, so that's the shorter length here. And with the default length of 24.24, I'm not going to lie, I can see this as an advanced map. Especially if you don't know what a prime number is, which means there's a number that can only be divided by one and itself. So the only evening number being two, and then odd numbers, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 23. You get the gist. Like any track which has mechanics which adjust where balloons can be or where towers can be, I definitely see it can be bumped up a level when it comes to its difficulty. But I would say the RBS is definitely more of a intermediate map, definitely. But... Anything that changes how the game needs to be played is definitely something, especially for beginner friendlies, can throw them off guard. It's like, oh my god, the track has changed, so now balloons spawn over here. Balance with its eight different RBSs, which I'm not going to individually lay out, but they're in the range of 27 to 29 RBS when it comes to all of its different track lengths. I would honestly put this down as beginner because you can utilize this center bit here in order to place down a, like a like a like a tag shoot here and it's able to really go to town in them. But it's honestly dependent on if you can keep the balloons in this part of the track here in order to make it work. So let's say get a giant condor and nab all the balloons that would otherwise escape back into the center. And they can continue doing the popping, but definitely still keep it in intermediate but if there was ever to change i would say put it on to beginner because of the amount of tracks that an individual tower can cover encrypted with an rbs of 32.77 because of these walls alone you could kind of put it as an advanced map but once the balloons are in the center and you have towers placed in here there's a lot of opportunity to be able to attack a balloon and you can cover the middle of the map either with like towers that can ignore line of sight or doesn't obey by the laws of RB of line of sight like artillery or planes or helicopters. And yeah, you can really utilize this map quite well if you have the right towers placed down. But some of the things with these maps, they are really tower dependent on what you put down. Like, you can't really cover the entire map with a submarine here. You could cover parts of it, but not a huge segment of it. Only a little bit of it. Bizarre. It's bizarre, really, because the top track has a slightly longer... Uh, sorry, slightly shorter RBS track length than the bottom track. Apparently, the top track has 23.18, and the bottom track has 23.20. I'm honestly going to say that this could lean towards advanced because you can't really utilize certain towers on this map. And the layout itself is just really unfriendly. Like, yes, you can cover both parts of it, both tracks if you lay down towers along here. But honestly, it is not a map that I go to in order to go to high rounds. And it's definitely one of the least friendly maps when it comes to monkeyopolises and farms in general adora's temple horizontal path so those that start from the from so horizontal starts from the middle and the vertical starts from the top and bottom uh horizontals with the rbs of 34.27 and vertical with 31.60 intermediate yeah it definitely stays here it's not a hugely easy map to try and fully utilize but obviously you can put something like a sniper on the top of this temple and you're able to hit any balloon along the map. What's really unique is that, depending on the tier that the tower is on, can really obscure its line of sight. So, put something up here. No line of, sky line of sight obstruction. Here, partial. This, most. Down here, most as well. Spring, spring, top path, 28.11 RBS. Bottom path, 28 exactly RBS. Intermediate is definitely the difficulty that this map should stay as. Like, you can place towers down in the beginning and near the end portion of the map, and you're able to cover both paths quite well. You can also place towers down on these little islands here, and 
because of the fact that they go around a little circle here means that you can attack a tower, uh, balloon sorry, multiple times along that single part of the track. So yeah, keep this map in the intermediate difficulty. It's not too friendly, but not too tough either. Carts and darts with an RBS of 37.14. I can definitely see this being leaned towards the beginner difficulty. It honestly is a map where you can quite well utilize certain towers here. Like if you have a mortar on this map, you can definitely cover like the beginning and the late portions of the map. So I would say if this was to ever go up or go down, I would say it has to go down in difficulty. I would say in some cases this is easier than End of the Road because End of the Road has a shorter track length. And on this map, you're able to attack towers multiple times, whereas on end of a road, you can only really you you can only really attack a balloon twice. Whereas if you have it here or here, you can attack a single balloon three times. Moon landing with an RBS of forty point three seven. Now this track is very tower dependent. With mortars, it's definitely a beginner category map but for a lot of other things yeah definitely intermediate i would say with like aces and helis especially like the helis razor rotor it can be beginner but honestly for lots of different other towers keep it as intermediate but again you can still use something like guided magic wizards in order to circumvent obstacles such as these craters but it's honestly a more beginner friendly map but ideally because of these craters alone it doesn't benefit a lot of towers aside if your name is juggernaut or ultra juggernaut or apex plasma master they bounce 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 you get the gist haunted with a relatively short track length of 21.14 rbs both ways obviously because they both cover the same part of the track if it's just down to track length and this could be advanced but because of its layout and where you can place down certain towers which have a radius rather than just shooting a straight line yeah keep it as an intermediate but it could be advanced but it's definitely more of a beginner friendly advanced more difficult intermediate Downstream with an RBS of 29.97. Now, this definitely has the track length of a intermediate map, but I think because of its layout, I think you could kind of see it as a beginner map as well, but I think it is just literally on the stepping stone bridge between friendly for beginners or just friendly... Well, sorry, not that friendly as a beginner map, but more friendly as an intermediate map. Like you can still use tack shooters along these cross paths here, especially I'd like say if you remove this one or one of these ones, but I prefer this one honestly because it's near the beginning of the map. So yeah, I think downstream is definitely an intermediate map, but it definitely sways more towards beginner rather than advanced. Firing range for some odd reason, the left track or the left entrance has a longer rbs than the right um i don't see where though there is a difference perhaps of the length here and here but i'm not too sure left entrance rbs of 33.80 right entrance 33.60 honestly I, i'm not too sure if i could trust the wiki a lot honestly but i would say this definitely fits the bill as an intermediate map both with RBS and the track length, like you can put a few uh, smaller footprint towers such as the Dark Monkey here. You're able to really utilize like snipers and other military towers on this map because of the fact that a lot of the time the balloons will be in this little portion of the map here where you'll be able to fully utilize certain like radius explosive attacks like mortars. You can remove this watchtower as well so that you can place certain, certain towers closer to the track as well. But it does have a relatively large cost that you can't really utilize at the beginning of a game. Cracked with an RBS of 37.77. I would say if there was ever an intermediate map that 
would be moved up to beginner this is definitely the most likely map like the layout of this map makes it very friendly in order to be able to um, attack a balloon multiple times so let's say for example if a balloon goes down here well you can attack it again once it gets here if it goes down here then obviously the tower can attack the balloon again sometimes it's not always the amount of track that can make a map friendly if you put a tower down here but it's also just like the amount of times that you can attack said tower that can make the difference between victory and defeat. Streambed with an RBS of 30.80. I'd say, yeah, definitely keep it as an intermediate map, but like with Cracked and the other map that I mentioned, which will have like just below 30 RBS. I've forgotten what it's called now, but it has like the semi stone bridge. But I would say this is definitely more lean towards a beginner map than a advanced map but intermediate is definitely the place where it should be kept as like this dinosaur head definitely makes a bit of a challenge beginning of the game if you don't have any means of farming or obviously if it's chimps then obviously you can't farm at all but it's also one of those maps where you can kind of use a monkeyopolis i would definitely say like the right side is more friendly because of the more straighter lines in which you can utilize Shoots with a left entrance RBS of 18.26 and the right entrance of 17.21. Officially, I don't see a difference. How is how is that an entire second less? I don't get it sometimes, but Shoots, I would say, is the map out of all the intermediate maps that should definitely deserve to be advanced. You can only really attack a balloon once, or if it's down in this portion here where the statues are, you can only really attack a balloon twice at the very max. I, the layout and the amount of track length, I see this more as an advanced map than a intermediate map. Rake with a top entrance RBS of 18.21 and the left entrance RBS of 17.75. Like Rashus, I think this is more of an advanced map than an intermediate map. Although I think the only saving grace of this map is because of the fact that you can attack a balloon multiple times. So let's say if you have a tower down here, then it could attack here, attack there attack here and possibly attack down here as well depending on the um coverage that that tower has but i'd say that's the only saving grace that uh rake has over shoots but i'd definitely say this is a second place contender to move from intermediate to advanced spice islands with an rbs of 27.10 yeah definitely intermediate keep it as intermediate it's also a very good opportunity for you to try and utilize your buccaneers and your subs and brickle. Also, Pat as well. Did you know Pat can be placed in water too because of his chonkiness? He floats very well. But its track layout makes it quite friendly if it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. You can place down a tower here and it's able to attack the beginning, this portion, this portion, this portion yeah definitely an intermediate map and these coconuts can provide some substance if you like coconuts dark path with approximate rbs of 21.5 yeah this is definitely an advanced map because there's only a few points of opportunity where you can fully utilize this middle portion of a track where the majority of the time a balloon would be and where you would want to keep a balloon if it's still on the track but this is honestly one of my least favorite tracks of the entire game which is why i haven't unlocked it to where i can play chimps on it honestly i can utilize juggernaut in order to bounce off these snow walls here but at the same time you have to use money in order to take off certain portions of the map and then then it makes it friendly for other towers but then not friendly for other towers so you kind of um putting two steps forward while at the same time one step back with dark path it's honestly a map that i really don't like to put a tower down on but it's really nice to look at erosion i feel is possibly the most intermediate or 
advanced or expert level map that can exist because of its different track lengths. The first path has 8.60, second has 10.69, third 13, and fourth 14 as well, fifth just under 10, and sixth being, well, 6.41. See this little track here? It's possible. <laughs> the only thing that's short of this is possibly belongs. Like erosion, I think scale is in difficulty because of a track length. But I think if you merge all of them together and make an average, then definitely an advanced map. But it's definitely a map we can't really utilize towers on because after a set amount of time, they disappear. But I guess you can preserve them if you have an ice middle path ice tower. But then that's not the best tower to use on a track like this. Like, I'm really conflicted. This is the most confusing map ever. Midnight Mansion with an RBS track length of around 19. Yeah, definitely an advanced map. Like, you have to kind of use this top row here to its maximum in order to make this map viable to do effectively. Obviously, there's absolutely no potential for your monkeyopolis to ever be alive because there's no such theme as farms on this track. So, when it comes to late game, it is obviously a very big challenge to try and utilize. And one of those maps that really tests your skills as a player, I feel. So yeah, advanced, leaning slightly more towards expert, but I don't see it as an expert map. Sunken Columns, with a RBS that is not yet confirmed by the wiki. But uh, yeah, definitely an advanced map. I don't see this being too friendly as a intermediate map, so I definitely wouldn't put it there. But it definitely has the track length looking at it and some points of like where balloons can exit and enter. Definitely an advanced map. And it's, this map also is inspired by the Balloons Tower Battles 2 map Basalt Columns. X Factor is definitely not going to win any awards here. RBSs vary depending on the track itself. Going from top, that's like top right is possibly the, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know how to take this really because it has differing RBSs depending on which way the balloons go along here. Like the 17.38, 18.75, 18.37 and 19.6a. Honestly, just because of this centerpiece here obstructing your ability to fully utilize this center part of a track to be able to meet with all of these different tracks, I can see this being an expert map. Like, this is possibly, when it comes to just layout in general, one of my least favorite maps in general. Like, you can place a sniper down and be able to attack any balloon on the track, but it's like, you only have certain length of a track in order to cover, which doesn't really make the sniper a very effective tower. But then again, I don't play chimps on this track, so I can't really give you a definitive answer as to whether or not this particular tower, or actually this is not effective at all. Um, <laughs> just water doesn't exist on this map. Hoenn, <laughs> it just, it's not a thing on this. Not, no water, not too much water. Mesa with its top path RBS of 16.41 and the bottom path of 12.49. I would say the bottom path, if it was just this, could be expert, but I honestly think because of the fact that you can place towers on the top of these rocks, it definitely does fit the advanced map difficulty. I don't think this map could be heightened or lowered in terms of difficulty. Geared with a RBS of 15.79. I have something to say about Geared. I'm not an expert level player at this game. So I find that if you put a tower down here and a few rounds it's going to be over here, I'm not going to be happy. I have to learn the configuration of this game in order to be able to fully utilize it. I believe this map is an expert map. I don't want to hear it, okay? I don't want to hear, well, if you actually play the map, then you'll be able to see where a certain tower will be able to fully utilize. I'm like, 
do I always have to use an ace or a heli or a mortar in order to be able to always be able to attack or sniper in that fact? I don't want that. I, I like placing down my towers for goodness sakes and not just another tower which always does the trick. Like if I find that if I put a tower down here and then in a few rounds I can't use it because it's all the way down here then I have to fully utilize like where on earth can I fully utilize a particular tower so that it can actually just I don't know do its job. I think Gid is an expert level difficulty map. Moving on from that rage inducing tantrum, Spillway is definitely an advanced map. If you're able to fully utilize a circle here, then it could be hit or miss if it's an intermediate. But I would say because of a limited accessibility when it comes to be able to, I don't know, pop a balloon. I keep using sniper as an example, but it's like, this is an example of a tower that can cover the entire track, but it's like, it can't because of line of sight blockers. So this definitely fits the bill of an advanced map. If you were to take away all of these walls, then an intermediate map. If you're able to just put a tower in the center here and it's able to cover all of a the circle, then yeah, intermediate. But this is definitely a tower dependent map, I would say. Cargo, with its main path being 15.86 RBS, with the Moab path being shorter, being 13.45 RBS, this definitely fits the bill of a of an advanced map. Could lean towards expert because of his really short track length, but I think because of the layout of the map itself, you can cover both the main path and the Moab path quite effectively. If you place towers along this part of the track here, if you fit some smaller footprint towers over here, you're able to cover these parts of the track. I don't know why, but you can put them up and down like that. But this, you can't place it down at all. Anyways, we've got, disregarding that, this is definitely an advanced map by its layout and not just down to its RBS alone. A lot of this sort of things, it's down to both the RBS and the track layout. It's not just one or the other, but they both contribute towards these sort of things. I would say keep this as advanced. Pat's pond with a top path rbs of 15.60 and the bottom path being slightly longer at 16.37 like again visually i can't really see the difference maybe this because it arcs downwards more whereas this goes towards the exit just a little bit more that could be it like it dips down here whereas it doesn't dip upwards here um advanced yes i can still see it being an expert map though because of the limited coverage that a tower can have in each portion of the map like you would honestly you need to remove all of these obstacles first before you can fully really utilize let's say the sniper monkey like you got these stone cobbles here and these trees here which obscures line of sight and there's not a lot of room here as well for let's say if you want to put down a monkey opolis but then again this is the kind of map that you want to go ultra late game with uh, I really ought to look at records of what the longest game, it was not the longest game, but the highest round of each like advanced and expert map people have gone for, because that'd be very interesting to see. Peninsula with a RBS of 16.16. Yeah, definitely an advanced map. It's not too short to be an expert map. But the layout itself makes it very difficult to fully utilize. Like, it's definitely a map that encourages you to use a lot of water-based towers in order to cover multiple portions of a track. Like, you could definitely use a sniper for this track if you put it up here. You can also use a super monkey as well with the middle path here in order to be able to cover all of this track here. But it's definitely a map where you need a lot of practice on but then again you could say that for a lot of intermediate advanced expert maps like a lot of beginner maps you don't really need a huge amount of practice on and they're the kind of the maps that you would i don't know learn the game before you go on to the more difficult maps high finance with its s path that goes in an s shape being of a rbs of 31.19 and the U path being a RBS track length of 17.63. Yeah, this definitely fits the bill of an advanced map. 
The S path could fit an intermediate, but the U could fit a advanced. So I would say this is definitely an advanced. But one disadvantageous factor of this map is that if you want to fully utilize it, you have to spend a lot of money in order to remove all of these debris here, which enables more floor space in order for you to be able to place down towers. Another brick with an RBS track length of 22.31. If I was to ever move an advanced map down to intermediate, it could definitely be warranted with this one. Like, there is a lot of space here in order to place down towers. Like, one of the only Monkeyopolis friendly maps that there are out there. It's also one of the few advanced maps which has had a boss on it, most recently with Lich. So, you could definitely see why this is an advanced map, but you could also see why it's an intermediate map. Definitely not a expert maps, uh, expert map at all, sorry. And you can also, like, hide towers along here in order to attack balloons which can circumvent line of sight like alchemist and the top path wizard off the coast with an rbs track length of 21.97 it's another track which i could see it being as an intermediate map like its layout is friendly enough where you can place down a tower and it's able to attack multiple parts parts of a track only twice at the very most but sometimes that's all you need in order to be able to eliminate the balloon itself depending on the tower itself you can place a sniper on the top of this crow's nest here if that's what you call it and be able to the top of a ship and be able to literally have a map wide coverage like obviously this is another map that really utilizes boats and it's also another one of those maps where it's one of the few advanced maps where you're where there's been a boss event going on it's every map where you can really utilize a monkeyopolis on. Cornfield with a RBS track length of 27.39. Now just imagine this track, but without any of these corns or plants on the field. Now that you'd that you'd think is an intermediate map. If you're going for the no harvest achievement, then an expert map. But if you're just playing this game normally from the start to finish, yet yeah, an advanced map definitely see it as an advanced map there's only a few times where you want to keep the corn in place so let's say if you want to utilize the top path dark monkey then you'd want all of this corn in place so that all of the juggernaut balls will bounce between the different cornfields here <laughs> this is definitely Theresa may's favorite map last but not least of the advanced maps is underground with the bottom loop being 15.09 rbs and the top loop being 14.44 yeah i think this part of the track here is slightly longer here than it is up there or vice versa advanced map definitely because of its layout like you can definitely cover like pretty much all aspects of the track here if you put the correct tower down like there are so many other maps where you can place a tower down and it's not able to reach over to the other end of the map but this one is rather centralized like you could put down a tack shooter here and be able to do a lot of damage honestly Glacial Trail, first of the expert maps. It's the most recent map added in the game as of the timing of this recording in version 40. RBS not unconfirmed and it definitely fits the bill of an expert map for two different reasons. Number one, it's um yeah, it's map layout. There's not a lot of space where you can place down a tower down here. And number two of the freezing mechanics. So let's say if we place down a tower on round three, when it gets to, let's say, 10 rounds in time, that tower is unable to do anything. Although if you place down a hero and it freezes, it still levels up, which is an interesting mechanic. You'd think that it wouldn't be able to do so because, well, it's frozen. And why on earth does an ice tower freeze when it literally is made of ice? Dark dungeons. Just for layout alone, definitely suits it being an expert map. Like, <laughs> all of these different paths are varying RBS track lanes. The left one, 13.13. Middle, 11.72. Sorry, the shortest. And not surprising because its endpoint is literally here rather than at the edge. Right side, 12.70. And the horizontal, surprisingly, being the longest, mainly because it has the most amount of zigzags. But yeah, definitely an, an expert map. 
there's no such thing as a tower that can fully utilize all of the track length i would say possibly the only thing that could possibly cover every single aspect of a track is the uh, the true sun god or vengeful adora when she's done a blood sacrifice but aside from that this map definitely suits expert sanctuary is a varying rbs map depending on where the balloon exits so it ranges between 12 and 15 rbs these ones being the longest and these ones being the shortest because of these columns always moving yeah this definitely fits as an expert map but i would say that the the moving of these columns here is less hindering than the moving on geared because even though if a tower is over here it can still attack a balloon whereas on geared if it's let's say on the bottom of the gear it can't do jack if it's one that has a limited range so sanctuary is definitely expert by both where towers can be and the map layout itself but i would definitely say it's one of the more friendly expert maps but still an expert map ravine the map where unless you use the sword is impossible to do a chimps run on i have a few choice words to say about you but just because i want to keep my sanity i'll just refer this map as definitely one that is in the expert category without a question or shadow doubt if there was ever the opportunity for extreme maps to come back to Balloon's Tower Defense 6. Put this map from expert to extreme. I despise this map when it comes to layout. There's only a few opportunities where you're able to fully utilize the track length. And even when you're able to put the sniper where it's able to go through the trees you're still not gonna have a good time and also you would rather put down a different tower here so that well <laughs> you could kind of utilize them but this map is one of the most torturous experiences ever flooded valley with an rbs of 10.12 definitely fitting of an expert map just by the track length itself but unlike most other expert maps this is one of the most begin so one of the most monkey opposite friendly maps ever like you can put down lots of farms over here but then again i think by the time you're able to fully utilize them well the game is already set done and matched because the balloons will make it to the other side of a track in a relatively short amount of time 10 seconds at the very 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 maximum honestly though there's been a record where this map has been done on chimps with just using submarines only, which is honestly a feat of itself. Infernal. Definitely a map that is debatable, honestly. You could say this as an advanced map with its RBS alone. But the only thing I would say that keeps this being in the expert category is, well, there's not really many places where you can place down a tower, for goodness sakes. But for some people... It's not really about how many, but how well. With the bottom RBS of 21.98 and the top path of 21.95, still, I don't see visually any differences, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, this is one of the maps where it's just debatable on whether or not it could stay an expert or it should be uh, deranked to advance when it comes to difficulty. I've heard that someone was able to do a Geraldo and Puma charge two tower chimps on this map, and that is honestly impressive in and of itself. And also, Chom Chom was able to afford super mines on chimps on this map. Thanks to the balanced hero being Corvus. Bloody puddles, as Bricky calls it. My homies hate bloody puddles. But I, I, I love this map. <laughs> For some odd reason, I love the chaos of this map. Anyways, definitely an expert map. But it's... I don't know why I'm just going to say this. But I think it's surprisingly one of the more... I don't know, approachable expert maps. Even though there are balloons going 
one way or another way and they appear on multiple tracks or if they both appear in the middle then you got balloons going up and balloons going down definitely expert map though when it comes to difficulty but i'm gonna say this right now i would rather play this than geared workshop if you don't tap any of these then <laughs> balloons will just zoom to the exit line like it like like this these conveyor belts make the balloons go so fast that you honestly are gonna have a hugely difficult time if you don't fully really utilize the reverse motor and the track extensions this is track extensions making it so that the balloons take a longer amount of time in order to get to the exit and the reverse motor meaning rather than the conveyor belt going forwards they go backwards so it's kind of like if you're trying to <laughs> i don't know why i'm saying this but it's like you're trying to go down an escalator where the escalator is going up or the other way around you're not going with the escalator you're going against it quad varies in rbs depending on where it starts and finishes it can go between 12 and a half to the um the lower ends of 14 when it comes to how much time a red balloon can enter then exit the map definitely expert you have to really put towers down in these corners here but also like the middle it's like but this is one of those maps where if you just do naval it's not the worst idea but definitely have some land towers down definitely especially like a village to increase their range but you have to really think about like the far future of what towers you place down especially on chimps where every single round matters so if it works on round six it also has to work on round 100 dark castle this is probably the only map where i would actually want it to be deranked to advance both its layout and the track length makes it so that if you just place towers along here and place some snipers and dark gunners up here on the wall you can fully utilize this map as long as you have the trees cut down like definitely expert with the trees up but by freeing those trees you're able to extend the track just a little bit more but it's just but the layout of the map makes it very friendly it's also the only expert map to have a boss event on that being my least favorite boss vortex Muddy Puddles pretty much has the same or a very similar track length to Bloody Puddles. What makes this map a bit more friendly is the fact that you don't have two paths active at any given time, just one path. But at the same time, that can make it harder because you've got to fully focus on that one track. But you can also utilize something like the Giant Condor to move balloons to a given track in order to fully utilize a particular track and where those towers are at any given point in time uh, i don't know why each of these tracks vary in length like this one has 10.89 this one has 11.01 .01, and the rest of these being 10.87 I, I i just don't see the visual difference here they all look the same to me but then again i'm not the best at this game so yeah definitely befitting of the expert difficulty ouch hashtag uh going down 4.5 rbs going to the side 5.7 rbs you know an extremely short track but the only thing that really is the saving grace of this map which doesn't really make it considered as like could be an extreme map if it was ever the case is the fact that you can place towers in this square here if you free up this water and you're able to cover all four portions of this track or you could just have like towers along here and some water towers over here like this is definitely a map where if you're able to chimps on it you are a very competent player finally the april falls slash joke of a map belongs with its shortest rbs track length of 4.22 just look at how much track length you've got to utilize. Although some players say this is not the most difficult expert map because of its layout. This is definitely a map where you can build the largest monkeyopolis because of all of its free space. 
It's free real estate. Sorry, Glue Gunner. So yeah, expert. Definitely by the track length itself. Layout wise, you could just put a ton of snipers down here and just really go to ham over here. Have yourself an absolute zero or other means of slowing down balloons, glue gunners, all that mess. This is a map where it has more T Mega Pops achievements than other expert maps, to say the least, just because of the layout of it. Layout is sometimes more important than track length. But I would say, actually, because of workshops, motors being on, like the like a straight line and the one that goes down, well, down then to the side, if the motors are on and the balloons are going their fastest, then that could be the shortest track length. But thank you all so much for watching. This has been a different video than usual. If you uh, have a different opinion than me, then I'd be very delighted to hear them down in the comment section below. Please be sure to use my creator support code if you are able to do so when you are in the store at all. That would be greatly appreciated. Just type in Flare Blondes with the tick marker. Definitely tick marker. And you are all sorted. Thank you all so much for watching. But regardless of your opinion, yours is right. Except Voidora's. Because Voidora, all they want is to swallow everything.